Hello and welcome to the Lair of the Visionary, where I show you how to build your very own props. And for this build, let's make the DH-17 Blaster Pistol from Star Wars. Oh, I've got a fairly optimistic feeling about this. Let's begin. For this build, you'll need pencil or pen, scissors, box cutter, super glue, white glue, hot glue gun and glue sticks, washable school glue sticks, cardboard, cardboard tubes, clothespins, EVA foam, thin craft foam, newspapers, hose clamps, long neck soda bottle, and paint. The templates for this build will be linked in the description down below for you to download and print out. So a little bit of trivia about the blaster. The DH-17 blaster pistol was commonly used by the Rebel Alliance troops during the Galactic Civil War, along with a few being used by the Empire. But the thing that I find really interesting about the blaster is from behind the scenes. It turns out that the props built for the DH-17, along with the E-11 blaster rifle, were made from and based off of the same weapon, the British Sterling submachine gun. Now another thing I find interesting is the fact that, like the E-11, there are some minor and major detail inconsistencies with the blaster from movie to movie. Though a lot of that, namely in A New Hope, is due to the actors using rubber cast stunt props as opposed to ones built from the actual machine gun. So to get a happy medium, I've decided to take the most inspiration from the way the blaster looked in EA's Star Wars Battlefront games, since they seem to take a lot of care and effort into designing the weapons in the games. Wish I could say the same thing about the games themselves, but anyway, on with the build. So, taking a thick cardboard tube, or PVC pipe if you want something really tough, and also have a means of cutting it. Now the tube I was using was a little bit too short, so I cut down some material from another cardboard tube, and super glued the extra to our first tube, making it the length I needed. And for those of you wondering, the reason I'm pouring the super glue straight out of the bottle instead of the nozzle is because... I accidentally glued the cap to the nozzle. I hate it when that happens. Then, I traced and cut these two designs out of the tube, which would be the shell ejection port, and the section where the bullets would get loaded into the actual gun that the blaster was based off of. Now I also have the shapes for these parts with the templates, so as to make it easier for you guys to trace and cut these designs out. So on a lot of cardboard tubes, they have these noticeable spiral designs, which are kind of annoying and disrupt the overall aesthetic. And if you're like me, you'll want to get rid of those. So to do this, I cut out several small pieces of newspapers. And then, taking some watered down glue, I started to paste on the newspaper clippings to our tube. Also, you'll probably want to use plain white glue as opposed to what I used, which was a gel. It just seems to work better that way. So then, I traced the template marked 1 onto some cardboard. I then flipped the template over and traced it out once again. Then I proceeded to cut both pieces out. These will be the side panels for what will eventually become the handle. Then I trace the very same template onto some EVA foam. Then cut it out. Then taking a clothespin, I modified it slightly by cutting it down to a smaller size. This will be our trigger. Then I made a few modifications to the foam piece that we just cut out to allow for the trigger to fit into what will be the handle. And then after, I hot glued the two cardboard side panels onto each side of the EVA foam piece, like so. And there we have the handle for our blaster. And now, back to the cardboard tube, 
I traced and cut a small slot into it to allow for the clothespin trigger to fit into place. So that way we'll be able to hot glue the handle to the tube. I then traced and cut out a long strip of cardboard, two and a half centimeters in width, and then I bent and hot glued it around a little cap that I had laying around. The cap is just there to give the cardboard a base to wrap around. Then I hot glued one end of this piece to some thin craft foam, cutting off the excess afterwards. And then I hot glued the piece onto the back end of our blaster. Then I traced and cut out two strips of cardboard, both 1.7 by 20 centimeters in size, and then I traced and cut out a strip of cereal box cardboard, 2 by 20 centimeters in size, and then hot glued our cardboard pieces onto the edges of the cereal box cardboard strip, like the way you see here. And basically, we're making a long box shape. And then I hot glued the piece onto the blaster. Then, taking a nickel, I traced out onto some cardboard two halves of a pill looking shape. And then I proceeded to cut both pieces out. Then I hot glued them to the blaster, like so. So now, for the scope, taking a smaller cardboard tube that I cut down to about 14 and a half centimeters in length, I hot glued a strip of cardboard 3.2 centimeters in width around one end of the tube. Then, taking a long neck soda bottle, I cut off the sections above and below the neck. And then, I cut a slit along the bottleneck like so, and basically modified it down shorter and smaller until I finally got it to about the right size I needed. Afterwards, I hot glued the narrow end of the piece onto some cereal box cardboard. Don't forget to cut off the excess. And then I hot glued and connected the other end onto the front end of the scope, like so. Then for the scope clamps, using two hose clamps, I cut off the excess metal and then I placed them around the scope, like so, and then screwed them into place. Then I cut out two small pieces of EVA foam and hot glued them under the hose clamps while also keeping them lined up with each other. Afterwards, I hot glued a strip of cardboard three centimeters in width around the scope in between the two hose clamps, like so. Now for the dials on the scope, Taking some washable school glue sticks, using the caps from two of them, I cut them down to a more stubby size. Then I hot glued screws onto the insides of the caps, and screwed them into the scope like so. So now for the rest of the barrel, taking another cardboard tube, I cut it down to about 12 and a half centimeters in length and coated it with some watered down white glue and newspaper clippings like what I did to the other tubes earlier. Then taking a plastic ketchup container that I got from a Wendy's, or was it a Burger King? I can't remember. I cut off the little lip at the opening, along with cutting out a circle into the bottom of it for the opening of the barrel. Then I super glued the container onto the cardboard tube, like so. Then taking some thin craft foam, you can also just use some thin cardboard if you don't have any craft foam. I began to trace and cut out several 10.7 by 0.4 centimeter strips. And then I equally spaced and super glued them around the barrel, like so. And now for the trigger guard, taking a paper clip, I bent it as straight as I possibly could then hot glued and sandwiched it in between two strips of thin craft foam like so. Then I bent it into the shape I wanted, cut off the excess, and hot glued it to the handle like so. 
Then for the blaster's grips, I traced out the grip templates onto some more thin craft foam. I then cut them out, and then using some spray adhesive, I glued them onto the handle of our blaster, like the way you see here. Oh, and you should always make sure to use spray adhesive outside and while wearing face or eye protection, as this stuff is incredibly messy to use. And sticky. But mostly sticky. So then, I added on a few remaining details to the blaster. And now, I gave all the sections of the blaster a base coat of spray paint, to prevent any part of it from getting soggy and warping for what comes next. So then, I coated every single part of the blaster with some thick gloss paintbrush paint. The reason for doing this is to help cover up areas like the seams of the newspapers that we glued to the blaster, and to seal up the parts that we used craft foam on. I also like the brush texture it gives everything. Then, I painted all the parts of the blaster with a coat of silver spray paint. And then, with the exception of the barrel and the front end of the scope, which I taped off with some painter's tape, I painted the other parts a satin black. Then after, I gave the pieces a light haze coat of some gray spray paint. This helps give the blaster a gunmetal look. And it also makes it so the darker sections of the blaster show up better on my camera. Now it's time to assemble the blaster. So taking another cardboard tube that I painted silver, along with cutting a section out of it to allow for it to squeeze into our blaster, I slid the tube into the blaster body, leaving enough sticking out of it to superglue and connect the barrel. And then I hot glued the scope to the blaster like so. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot, for the sling swivel on the back end of the blaster, Taking a little block of EVA foam and a belt ring that I had laying around, I cut a small slot into the foam to allow for us to place the ring into it. So then we can just super glue the foam with the ring onto the blaster like so. And then to give the blaster that weathered and used look that we're so used to seeing in the Star Wars universe, I took a silver paint pen and began to use it on the edges on certain parts of the blaster. This helps give the blaster a used look by having it seem like there's exposed metal showing. Then after doing that, taking some watered down black paintbrush paint, I began to coat sections of the blaster. And then while the paint is still nice and wet, I dabbed and washed around the watered down paint using a sponge, along with some paper towels to help get some of the more harder to reach crevices. And now, you're all clear, kid. All that's left to do is to coat the blaster in some gloss plastic finish. And we're done.